you're someone who doesn't own a fancy iPad and you've only got one of those good old laptops, are you missing out big time? In a 2021 survey, out of a thousand students, actually only one quarter of people said that they own a tablet. And 99% of respondents said that their laptop is their main learning tool. Even with 99% of us still using laptops, it's crazy that I cannot find anyone talking about taking notes on laptops. Everyone's just raving about their newest iPads. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys a really easy way of how I take notes in medical school on my laptop, which note taking app to use, and how how you actually make use of your notes later on in the year to get that A plus that you want. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. I know you guys are itching to hear this, but it might not be what you think it is. There are many studies out there that have specifically looked at note taking on the laptop versus handwriting on paper. Based on the studies, it does suggest that handwriting notes has the upper hand in visual learning and better encoding. These students end up having a deeper processing of the information they've just learned because they have to rewrite things in their own words. These findings are specific to writing on a paper and not writing on a tablet. But what about laptops? Interestingly, they found that laptops may be more suitable for fast-paced environments where a large amount of information needs to be captured quickly and efficiently. What does this mean for you and which one is better? Well, it turns out the results are pretty inconclusive and it varies from person to person, subject to subject. It's actually what you do afterwards that matters the most. Both laptop and tablet or even handwriting are all just as bad if you don't know how to study your notes afterwards. I'm going to show you how you can revise your notes on your laptop efficiently at the very end of the video, so make sure you don't miss it. Now let's get to writing your laptop notes. First, let's choose the right application for you. I remember during my pre-med year, like choosing the right note-taking app is just the vein of my existence. I swear, like everyone was using a different note-taking app in the lecture theater. I'd look to my left and someone's using Google Docs and to my right, someone's using Evernote. So at first I went with Google Docs and Google Drive for the first year in my pre-med year. But the downside was that it was pretty hard to look up for notes when I specifically needed something. And it was not very easy to edit things and add photos very easily. So then I tried Evernote. And to be very honest, I don't think I gave Evernote like a fair chance to really test it out because I just remember the first impression of Evernote, too complicated, too hard, and I gave up pretty quickly. Then I found OneNote and I swear three quarters of my class in med school were using this OneNote app. And it was perfect for me for many, many reasons, but one of them is because it's free and it has a really great structure for organizing medical notes. And it syncs across lots of different devices, your phones, your tablets, your laptops, and it's even available offline to edit. And last of all, it has lots and lots of different note-taking features that is absolutely life-changing to note-taking, which I'll show you a little later. You might be thinking, oh Eunice, what about Notion? Well, back in my days, Notion really wasn't that popular yet. And I have to be really honest that I've never used Notion for medicine. I have used it for YouTube production. And I think that it's a very useful tool in that regard, but I wouldn't use it for med school notes. This is what Justin Song, who is a study coach, he sums it up pretty well. For study, over. Rated. If the rating is here, if this is over, it is here. I think Notion is not designed for studying. I feel that Notion is not a note-taking app, but its strength is in project management in a team setting, where there are lots of tasks that you do need to track and things like that. But for note-taking for students, I think Notion is a bit too rigid, it's too task-based, and it doesn't really encourage non-linear thinking. If you've enjoyed this video so far, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and let me know. Has anyone at school actually taught you how to write a really good set of notes? I remember back in high school, in my biology class, my teacher would say, Class, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And literally, I would write in my notes, The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But the problem with this is that you're not actually challenging your brain to understand or make use of this new information that's coming into your brain. And it turns out that there are tons of more effective note-taking strategies out there. Mind mapping, matrix note-taking, charting method, Cornell method. And you know what? It really doesn't matter which one you pick. As long as you're not copy and pasting your notes. Because then you might as well not make any notes because it's a complete waste of your time. So instead, my biology note's going to look like this or this. 
The thing with copy and pasting is that it really does not require any brain power, so zero cognitive loading, and it simply does not fit in any levels of learning. I know it can be super tempting, really easy to just copy and paste when you're taking notes on your laptop, because I know, I've been there before. But if you find that note taking is really easy for you, then honey, you are doing it wrong, because it's not going to stick in here. Now, there are three parts to writing really good notes. The first part is preparation, and this is in regards to lecture slides. I usually have my lecture slides downloaded as a PDF folder that I can later attach to my OneNote on the subject, or I can have it inserted as a printout into OneNote, and it's this function here. Then later on with the printout, you can then annotate on the slides as you go, which is pretty handy. And I usually do this a day before the lecture, so then I can prime my brain on the lecture subject. I mean, ideally, it would be great if I could make a full set of notes during the lecture, but it is virtually next to impossible to try and do that in a med school lecture. I just remember getting absolutely shook when my anatomy lecturer was like, Hey, by the way, this one lecture is 10 lectures compiled. Good luck, guys. So if you feel like there's too much information in your lecture, then you might as well try to understand what the heck is going on rather than focus on getting everything down on paper or on your laptop. Now that we're finished with annotating the lecture slides, you're not done yet. We're going to create our own set of notes from the lectures. During this time, I focus on distilling the most important information or summary of the topic into one or two pages on what we've just learned. You might be asking, why can't I just study from the annotated lecture slides? You know, good question, but here are two reasons why I think it's not a good idea. Number one, each time that you're going through the process of creating your own notes, you're engaging with the material actively and making your revision for later a whole lot easier. And number two, imagine going through a hundred lecture slides to find that one piece of information that you need to study. What a nightmare, right? So here are a few examples of how I create effective notes on my laptop. The first one is objective-based notes. So this is just summarizing the notes into bullet points and really summarized version, keeping it really brief, just the essence of it. And I include lots of images, any videos that can explain better than words do. The second method is the matrix note-taking method, which is one of my absolute favorites for medicine. This is using a grid or a table to compare and contrast the information that you have learned. The benefit of this is that you're able to organize a complex set of information in a really logical way, and it's especially helpful for subjects like history or medicine, which are things that you can compare and contrast a lot of the time. The third method is mind mapping. Listen, you don't need a tablet with a stylus pen to be able to create mind maps. I mean, obviously great if you can, but not everyone's going to be able to afford a tablet or an iPad. So I got you. You can use free online tools like Lucid Spark to create your mind maps online and then you capture it and pop it into your notes later on. For me, in my first year of medical school, I actually used to do them by hand on an A4 piece of paper, and then later on I scan and chuck them onto my OneNote. But come to the end of my medical school career, in my last year of uni, I got myself a, a Surface Go, and I would use it to draw my maps. But even then, it still never replaced my laptop notes. Now here are some really cool OneNote features that you should save for later on, and it will make your note taking so much easier. First one is creating templates for different types of notes. So for matrix note taking, I actually use this heaps and heaps in my MRCP notes, and I use this a lot because this is the most appropriate, like one that makes sense for me in clinical medicine. So I have this saved as a default template in my MRCP notebook, and I'll show you how to do this. What you do is you create a page and the template that you ideally want your notes to look like, then next you go onto notebooks, pages, and then you click set as default template. Voila! It's that easy. The second feature that's really impressive on OneNote is that you can access notes anywhere. You know those times that you turn up at a tutorial or a lecture and you've forgotten your laptop, you're like, oh my god, but you're good actually. If you have a smartphone, you're good to go because the OneNote mobile app is really, really good and you can access it offline as well. As long as you go into an internet, it will sync to your laptop later on. The third one is that you can capture notes on the go. So picture yourself coming across a textbook with a really amazing diagram that you just can't get a PDF version of. What you can do is that you can grab your phone and quickly capture the photo and then chuck it onto your OneNote mobile app and later on it'll sync to your laptop. Or if you're watching a YouTube video and you find a frame where it describes things amazingly, you just want to screenshot of it. What you can do is just grab screen clippings and it will get inserted straight into your notes, no hassle. Feature number four is that OneNote has a very searchable database. You literally can just go Control F, type the keyword you're after, and boom, all the lecture, all your notes that you've written in the past, I don't know, four or five years, shows up. It's essential if you have a really long degree like medicine. Feature number five is the linking system. The neat thing about OneNote is that you can link OneNote to another note. 
that you want yourself to look at when you're looking at this note. And a practical example is that I actually have a master page for most of my subjects and this is where I bring all the relevant ideas of that subject together in one page and then I link it out to relevant notes for more information if I need to. I talk in depth of how I structure and organize my OneNote in this video here, so if you're not used to OneNote, make sure you check out this video. Now the third part is actually making use of your notes, which is revision, which I find is the most important step to getting those good grades. Revision is where you start to use active recall, which basically is just testing yourself what you already know. The most popular way of using active recall is actually using Anki decks. A lot of my colleagues in med school, they like to copy their notes on OneNote and then paste it as questions into Anki and that became their study deck. I have to admit that I don't make my own Anki decks because I think they are such a time sinker. I did try sticking to Anki for maybe one week, the entire of my six year medical school degree. I tried really hard to stick to it, but I find it really hard to keep up. So I absolutely just fell off the wagon and instead I went online and searched for Anki decks for med school and I found this deck called Zanki, which at the time was free, but I think nowadays you have to pay a small fee for it. So even if you have to pay a small fee for it, you know, if money can buy you back time, I 100% would recommend. I also really like to use my maps as a form of active recall, and I like to do it under exam conditions, so I'm not peeking over my notes. So this is a really good way to test the knowledge that you already have learned, and it's a good way to see different connections between the topics and ideas that you've learned already, bringing it all together in one place. And this is also known as the hip in theory, where the neurons that are wired together eventually start to fire together. So it strengthens your knowledge even more in that subject. If you have a friend who's doing the same course as you or anyone who would listen to you, that's good enough. Try explaining to them a topic or a subject in really simple terms, or this is also known as Feynman technique. I use this technique almost every night leading up to exams and tests in medical school with my friend and it works superbly. It's just a really good way to see what areas you're weak in and it's also kind of embarrassing when you F up in front of your friends and you forget stuff so then that sticks with you even better in your memory for later on in the exam. I also use past exam papers throughout the year. This is like high yield, golden stuff and I don't leave it last minute just before the exam. This is because it gives you a better gauge of what you actually need to focus on to do better in exams. Studying exams is all about finding those high yield topics, the common things that come at exams. You know, it's all about playing the game right. If you want to learn how to get A pluses in all of your tests, then you need to learn the right way to revise for your exams in this next video here.